microwaves. The waves, not the appliance. They can heat food, but can also make people sick. Last year, personnel at the US Embassy in Cuba were thought to have been attacked by microwave weapons. Microwave weapons? I thought all I had to worry about was whether or not I was standing too close to my microwave at home. Microwaves, the appliance, not the waves, have always been at the center of this urban legend. They're dangerous to stand next to. They'll give you radiation poisoning. They just can't be safe for you. And if people are making weapons with them, then is all of this true? So, is your microwave dangerous? Come on, let's go. Mm. Well, first of all, how do we even get the microwave? Mm. All the way back in 1946, engineer Percy Spencer was testing a military-grade magnetron, a mechanism that helped generate microwaves, when he stumbled upon a curious discovery. A peanut cluster bar, a snack he brought to work that day, melted in his pocket. Spencer was baffled. I mean, what the hell is the power to melt a peanut cluster? It's really melted onto this plate. Looking back at the magnetron, he conducted another test. Spencer placed an egg underneath the magnetron, turned it on, and pop! It exploded all over his face. Probably the best case scenario of an egg on your face moment. Pretty soon, he was literally making popcorn for people in his office using the newfound discovery, and a year later, the first commercial microwave would be born. Except, it wasn't called a microwave. It was called the Rat Arrange, which sounds a lot like something you'd find in a video game. It also cost over two thousand dollars and weighed almost 750 pounds. That's about half the weight of a cow. So it wasn't exactly the most convenient appliance to get delivered to your home. Not to mention this technology was new and different. Think about it. Some engineer comes up with a giant device that's marketed to heat up food using microwave technology. If I were a consumer in the 1950s, I'd call bullshit. Americans just weren't ready to spend that kind of money on an appliance that they frankly didn't understand. So how exactly did this fabled technology work? Well, let's start with a magnetron. A magnetron produces microwave radiation in a small area it's facing. A hot cathode emits electrons that are deflected by a magnetic field. Cavities surrounding the cathode radiate electromagnetic energy as a result. These waves are directed onto the food sitting on top of the dish while your food rotates. Your food needs to spin so that the microwaves can enter every side of it. This is what cooks your food evenly. So the next time you see your food get stuck in there and you're too lazy to open the door, just do it and nudge it. You can thank me later. These waves also have the potential to bounce off of the metal walls of the chamber and hit your food. After all, they travel at about the speed of light. Once the waves reach your food, they stop bouncing and enter, traveling to the center and causing molecules to vibrate faster and faster. I'm talking way faster than your phone could ever vibrate. These molecules heat up the food the more they vibrate, cooking your food from the inside out. Kind of like when you rub your hands together when you're cold. The friction of the molecules heats up the entire dish. So who needs hand warmers? Liquid distribution is also a huge factor. The more liquid is evenly distributed, the more even your food will cook. Also, life hack, if you put a wet towel on dry food, it actually cooks better thanks to this principle. So try it next time you're heating up some rice or something, I don't know. Okay, the convenience is a major selling point of a microwave. But is a microwave safe? After all, it is essentially a machine that pumps out electromagnetic radiation. Are you being exposed to any dangers? Okay, so remember when your parents would tell you to get away from the microwave whenever you turned it on, and you think, oh, that's bullshit. I'm invincible and I'm never gonna die. Well, their caution wasn't based on much because if your microwave does actually eat out any radiation, standing in front doesn't actually expose you to it. Your microwave is actually designed to keep radiation in. That's why it can pretty much lock itself shut to keep the electromagnetic radiation contained and you safe from exposure. Also, Opposite the waveguide is a metal grid on the wall of the microwave that blocks radiation from escaping. The holes on the grid are huge, right? Well, microwaves are actually much bigger than you'd expect, so it is a sufficient defense. For the most part, you're actually pretty safe. 
However, the FDA has warned on its website that microwave-related injuries do happen. Most of them are just burns from hot food. I was a victim of one of these injuries, by the way. Oh, me. Oh. You okay? Ow! Too hot? Oh, Ow, yeah, it was way too hot. When the package says let it cool, let it cool. A small percentage of injuries is attributed to radiation. It's as much detail as we can get from the FDA's official website. A small percentage, which seems shady, but in all my research for this piece, nothing I saw pointed to dangerous radiation leaching into you or your food. They've said that this is probably due to improper servicing and unusual circumstances in which radiation has leaked through. Plus, the FDA has restrictions in place that require microwave manufacturers to make sure only a certain amount of radiation leaks out, if any. Are microwaves supposed to leak out radiation? Not really. But as with any home appliance you own for years, microwaves aren't immune to wear and tear. But is your food actually safe from radiation? Or are you consuming radioactive leftovers? Well, the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry actually published a study in 2010 that suggests microwaving vegetables is actually a valid way of steaming them. The team microwaved Brussels sprouts and found that they kept their cancer-battling properties intact. Despite research, there are still some skeptics on the internet who believe microwaves and Wi-Fi are slowly killing us. Studies have been done on short-term effects with no evidence suggesting this, but more long-term studies should be conducted before we consider ourselves scot-free. Now that we know that the microwave in your home is pretty safe, we should talk about those microwave weapons. Since 2016, diplomats at the U.S.'s Cuban embassy suffered an odd combination of symptoms and ailments that confused experts. Ear pain, vertigo, nausea, fatigue, headaches, a lot of what these diplomats had in common was hearing loud noises that weren't actually there. But scientists were quick to point out that microwaves could have been a culprit. Experiments in 1962 proved that certain parts of our brain can perceive microwaves as sound. And with no other clear explanation, this microwave weapon theory seemed to hold a lot of weight. However, other scientists have called bullshit. The symptoms have been attributed to shared stress, viruses and bacteria, and even psychological contagion. Like when somebody tells you there's a cold going around and you were feeling fine, but then an hour later you start sneezing, that's a lot like how psychological contagion works. If somebody says, I hear buzzing, pretty soon you might start hearing buzzing. It's scary. But again, scientists aren't worried. Microwave technology hasn't improved much since its inception, but in the future, we might see huge changes to the household staple. Amazon sells Alexa-enabled microwaves that you can actually talk to. Starting frozen vegetables, 5 minutes, 46 seconds. Microwaves could also get much smaller and even portable. The Adventurer microwave is being developed by UK company Wave and is basically a microwave you can take with you on the go. It's the size of a big thermos and can heat food for about five minutes at a time. I'll take 10, thanks. There's also the intelligent RF cooking appliance being developed by NXP, which uses multiple microwave sources to cook different foods the best possible way at the same time. You can also defrost foods and boil liquids without them spilling over their containers because it recognizes electrical resistance inside. As for microwave weapons, there are such a thing as DEWs, or directed energy weapons, that use microwaves and other energy forms to attack enemy vehicles, missiles, and personnel. These include the active denial system, a non-lethal microwave weapon that heats the water inside human skin, causing pain. But no lethal microwave weapons exist. So there's nothing to worry about at the moment. Until then, I'll be here reheating pizza to my heart's content. Just give me a second to yank this out. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching Contextual. If you liked this episode, please make sure to leave a comment below and tell us what you liked about it. And if you have ideas for new episodes for next season, let us know in the comments as well. We have new episodes coming out every Thursday, so if you want to keep track of all the new episodes coming out, please like and subscribe to our page. And as always, have a great day.